I'm at the National Astronomers Meeting here in Cardiff and I'm talking to Amelia Calabresa from Cardiff University who just gave a talk about precision cosmology with the cosmic microwave background radiation. So Amelia, what is the cosmic microwave background radiation? Um, so the, the simple way to explain it is just to think of it as the very first light ever emitted in our universe. Um, you know, we get light from the sun, uh, that's uh, one object that emits a radiation that comes to you in the form of light. Well, at the very beginning, during Big Bang, there was a similar emission, and that was what we call the cosmic microwave background, uh, and that's been traveling from that moment all the way to today, and we pick it up today and see it, and it allows us to see back at the very beginning of the universe. And what can we learn from, from looking at the, the CMB? Uh, the short answer is pretty much everything that happened in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a big statement. But basically, because it's been there forever, really, like from the very beginning all the way to today, he has been picking up um, uh, signals, processes. Uh, it's basically been watching out for us, right? And then carrying information as it travels all the way down. Uh, sometimes I use the uh, example of uh, thinking of it as your great, 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 great <laughs> grandfather who has all these stories to tell you of all the things that have gone through and they are now here to tell you all about it. And because I, I must confess, every time I look at the CMB, to me, it just looks like a bunch of blobs. So mm -hmm. how do you go from, from that to being able to, to get all of this information from it? It's not an immediate one-to-one -one thing. So it's not like, oh, I want to find out if there is an object over there and I go and spot it. It's much more subtle with CMB science. It's not discovering a new galaxy and so you just look deeper or better in a specific region of the sky and suddenly appears. Uh, all the different physics is baked together in those blobs that we see, that you know you, you're referring to. Uh, and we need to come up with some statistical methods and um, quantities that then we can more easily interpret. So we have found a way of mathematically describing all that physics and what it would look like in those blobs and then do the reverse process of taking the blobs and extracting the physics from it. Mm -hmm. So it's not an immediate visualization. So is it you, you work out what it is that you're expecting to find according to our idea of the universe? Right, so we can write down some very complicated equations and predict what your CMB signal would look like if the universe had a specific uh, composition or a specific age or uh, property. Uh, and then you take that model and you... Uh, look at what kind of blob distribution it gives you, basically, and compare with your observations. And that's the way you rule in or out a hypothesis on your modeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, your, your talk was called Precision Cosmology, which are two words that don't generally go together. Um, so what, why is it precision? What's so precise about it? It's because over the last two decades, we have had a huge jump in... Um, quality and quantity of our data, and that has meant that the answers we get out from them are extremely precise. Uh, so some of the key quantity that we um, extract from it, I'll give you an example, if we want to uh, understand how old the universe is, or like how fast it's moving, or how much of a specific matter component is present in it. So we have all these parameters that uh, quantify these things and we can measure them and we can measure them with a ridiculous precision. So I, I would be able to tell you uh, really, really, really well how much of all these things are in the universe, for example. So we have reached a level where we are, you know, sub percent precision Mm. measurements or constraints on quantities that then define the physics of the universe. That is incredible that it's, it's come down that much. And how do you actually go about measuring the CMB in the first place? 
Uh, well, you need a telescope. That's step one. <laughs> <laughs> and it has to be a pretty advanced one. Um, so we have um, entire teams and institutions that simply focus on designing the technology and the instrumentation that is required to go after these tiny signals that, you know, they're present in the universe, they permeate the universe, but they are extremely small and everything else in the universe is not small. <laughs> and so you need to go after something and being able to pick them up. Um, so there is a huge effort in developing, you know, very precise cameras and sensors that then you put on very advanced telescopes and point them at the sky, either from the ground or you launch into space with a satellite. Uh, and with those, you then collect the, the you know, key quantities or key properties of this light, usually they tend to be tiny fluctuations in the way the temperature is distributed across the sky or how polarized the light is, etc. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned there that there are some, some difficulties with picking out this tiny signal. Um, what, what are those difficulties? Um, so, well, obviously there is a lot of things on top of it. Uh, so, as I said, this is the light coming from the Big Bang, and there is a lot more that has happened in the universe since the Big Bang. So, for example, galaxies were not there, well, stars were not there, and galaxies were not there at the beginning. They appeared later on. And the CMB travels through them, and they are, you know, closer to us than, than the CMB, so they will be in the way. Um, and they also emit, they also have a signal, and it's much stronger than the signal from the CMB. And then as you know, it comes through our skies, there is the atmosphere uh, and there are all other sorts of emissions. And then when it gets to our uh, instruments, there are all the technicalities of you know, how sensitive and how much noise there is in your camera and stuff like that. So there are all these things that then contaminate in a way your primordial signal mm -hmm. um, and they need to be removed or <laughs> cared for. So it's, it's, that's the thing that always sort of blows my mind a bit about the, the CMB is that normally the noise is something that's like a small percentage of your signal, whereas with the CMB, it's this massive thing you have to take off first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's been, been lots of uh, spacecraft and, and different telescopes that have been measuring the CMB over the last... 50 years. Do we have anything coming up that's going to help improve our measurements? Yeah, actually we have um, one mission in the pipeline that is uh, meant to go at the end of this decade, and that's the next mission dedicated to CMB observations. Uh, this is a Japanese-led uh, experiment called Lightbird, mm -hmm. uh, which has been well, it's currently been designed and, you know, it's going through all those phases where you make sure that you are building the thing that you need to build and that you're doing properly and that it passes all, you know, the mm -hmm. uh, technology uh, readiness uh, tests, et cetera, to be able to go to space. Uh, and that's extremely exciting because... Uh, I'm sure you have heard of the Planck satellite mission, which mm -hmm. finished its course uh, uh, like a few years ago. And, and this is now going to be the next generation and the next step um, to go to space. And when it comes to trying to Im improve our view of the CMB, what is, is it about it that you're trying to improve? Is it, uh, it get better angular resolution, more sensitive? all of the above? <laughs> it's, it's a bit of everything. Um, so the, it, it, the signal itself comes in a few flavors. If you want, there is uh, some uh, key information in the temperature field and then uh, other information in the polarization field, for example. Mm -hmm. And with Planck and the experiments we've run so far, we've managed to you know, push temperature really, really well, to measure it really well, to exploit it uh, mm -hmm. the best we could. We are not there yet in polarization. And 
The reason we are not there yet is because it's a much smaller signal, and so it took us longer to develop the technology, mm -hmm. to play around with temperature first, which, you know, it's brighter, and mm -hmm. so you pick it up first, you study it. And now we're getting to the regime where, like, okay, let's, let's do the same for polarization. And polarization is... It's got two jobs to do at present. The first one is, okay, confirm what temperature so is one universe. And if we see, you know, one scenario and one component, the other one should be able to confirm it mm -hmm. um, if we got it right. So that's one cross test or cross check on what we're doing and that we're doing properly. The other job is like, tell us something more. And how do we do that? Well, there are regions in the polarization signal that are completely new regimes and completely new levels of um, uh, or new places where models can be tested. And, you know, if um, there is a, a phenomenon that leaves an imprint, it might be clearer or visible just there. And so there is that open space for potential new discoveries or new understanding of the models that, that we are currently supporting. Mm -hmm. And how do you actually go about measuring polarization? Is it just because with the, the rest of the CMB, you, you take the, the microwave radiation of it? Is it something else that you look for there? Right, so your detectors will be sensitive, not just to the total intensity of your signal, but also to the polarization part of mm -hmm. it. And so it's just a matter of being able to pick up different directions uh, of the incoming light. Mm -hmm. and, and by that working out, is, is this light polarized in which direction and how much degree of polarization light? It's basically looking at geometric patterns into uh, the radiation itself and quantifying you know, how polarized are there mm -hmm. and what direction are actually these patterns going for mm -hmm. and how much of it there is. Well, that's great to hear and <laughs> I look forward to hearing more about the CMB in the future. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.